This is Nina Curley from WAMDA. I'm here at the MENA Business Women's Network Forum with Hayat Sindhi, the CEO and founder of the I2 Institute. Hayat, how are you? I'm perfect. I'm fine. Excellent. How have you been enjoying the forum so far? So well. Um, it is amazing to see. I was so overwhelmed with, with, the, with the presence and the warmth and the energy of the uh, all women actually uh, uh, in here. Amazing women, uh, women with mission, women with purpose, uh, strong and articulate and also so friendly. I agree. Um, yesterday you gave a fantastic uh, presentation about your um, I'm gonna, it's a microchip technology that can be used to run medical tests for very low cost in developing countries. Can you describe that to us? Uh, yes, uh, it is, a, uh, I like the word you use, microchip, but it actually is biochip because we are using the technology of computer and apply biology to that. So it's like now the revolution after microchip is going to be biochip. And that's the way why, why engineers and technologists uh, have to look to how to solve problem, why medicine is ha holding us back from the new discovery of new drugs or a cure for diseases. Because we, if we wanted to do that, we need to first to understand the makeup of our own human body. The minute we understand that, the minute we understand the secret and unblock that, we can very easily understand how we can uh, cure the diseases. So I come with this in a sensor. Uh, it's an amazing sensor. Um, I believe it's nothing like that there in the world. Um, it's, um, it's a low cost, uh, and that's the main purpose. It's a low cost. It's easy to operate. It can be accessible to everybody, and it can reach. I mean, benefit of science and technology should reach everyone. That should be the, we should look how we're going to affect society. And that's the main purpose. And it is very close to my heart and, and, at, like, and any women in terms of like the application of this type of biochip, I wanted to apply it to discover or to detect uh, breast cancer in early stages. And, um, they don't have to be from a certain group or from a certain color to benefit from, from the technology. It has to reach every, each, every single woman in the universe has the right to access and has the right to be able to can monitor her health and they has the right uh, to prevent the progress of any diseases. It's, it's an amazing technology and I look forward to seeing uh, you look for funding for it. Um, can you also tell us about the I2 Institute and what you're trying to do bringing uh, a mentality of you know encouraging science students to go into entrepreneurship in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Um, I believe um, innovation is the power, uh, and I believe the innovation based on science is the power. And I would love to uh, give this platform because I'm also um, um, uh, been uh, walking down the same line, and I'm still looking for funding. So I would love to. What I've been through, I would love to facilitate. I want. I love to help the all inventors, start from Saudi Arabia and to the rest of the region and the rest of the world, find the styles and the means to see their ideas come true and give them also the confidence to believe that they can. Uh, the, the whole purpose of creating an um, uh, institute for imagination and ingenuity to, to create this ecosystem of entrepreneurship and social innovation for scientists, engineers and technologists in the Middle East and beyond. We want to give them the platform to be able to not to um, to don't have to think or worry about anything else except how good is their technology. They, um, they like will be mentors providing for them. It will be people to help them with the business model, people to help them with the marketing uh, analysis and with their own patent. And I carry them step by step to uh, make them uh, understand what is the scope of the business and make them entrepreneur themselves based on science that affect back society. And what have been the biggest factors holding that back to date, having a culture of, you know, just a natural culture of science and technology development, given the region's history? Um, what, you know, what in the past few decades has been holding that back? Because the people lack confidence that science is not, doesn't belong to the Middle East, whereas the birth of science come from actually the ancestors from there. The main thing is holding us back is the trust, is the confidence. And if, if you believe and yourself, if you believe that you can't do something, the sky is the limit. You go 100% or 1,000, you know, percent for it, and you don't care. You don't care about uh, um, the struggle. You don't care about, uh, um, you know, 
will be uh, the hardship because you believe you believe that you're going to do that and you carry on. But you've also spoken in terms of what governments can do about the need to invest in R and D. Can you discuss the numbers on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're so lucky we have this uh, uh, initiative uh, from the king. Uh, you know, last year, I uh, uh, heard that $40 billion were invested in training and education. Uh, we have, I think, about 130,000 students, or maybe more, studying abroad, because it's under the king initiative that we want to give the platform and want to encourage students to go on, you know, for further studies um, abroad, to learn from the good institutions, from great uh, universities. But I'm talking here about what is after that. You know, I would love to uh, help and provide a platform after they come back or where, while they are doing their own uh, studies and they come with the ideas, uh, how I'm going to help them take the idea from the lab and give it to the hand of the people. We need to inspire them. We need to encourage them. We need, we need to make them, they are part of the picture. They are the responsible, you know, responsible for making their country so that they put their full potential. We need to give them the platform and the lead you know, to lead the change in terms of that ideas and a new market and a new opportunities. And Hayat, um, what are the critical ingredients for innovation and entrepreneurship? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so many, uh, and I, I want to put it in like um, in three, four points. To, to innovate, uh, we need to have the first ingredient, we need to give the freedom for people to imagine. We need to tell them you can imagine anything. You can imagine, um, you know, the best restaurant in the world. You can imagine a grass on the desert. You can imagine mirror and mirror in the in the moon. Uh, where to look and what you dream, you know, bring it over, you know, bring it here. And also the second ingredient uh, is ingenuity. You know, you cannot have imagination without the practicality. You need to work in both levels. You want to work the, the level of the mind to grow imagination and also in practicality in terms of how the action, how can I manifest it, how can I realize it. Uh, and also, most of people they understand in entrepreneurship is based on, um, you know, a good market opportunity, um, a, a smart business, and a little bit on science. Actually, it's the wrong uh, uh, assumption. In, in, in innovation and entrepreneurship, in, uh, to be um, uh, to sustain, it has to be based big, big portion of it on science. We need to understand science because the minute you understand it's based on science, then you can always revolve and evolve and change. Because, you know, if you look at the great com companies that, you know, producing the uh, science for us, like Corning or Johnson & Johnson or HP, they always reinvent it because it's, if it's based on science, you know, if you have it just based on a smart idea, it is like a business affecting one group and one family and few people in the community, but when it's based on science, how many routes you go into infrastructure in the society, how many jobs you go going to apply, and how many ideas you go going to uh, breathe from that. And we need to have the confidence we can do it. Also, uh, um, to, be, uh, to start uh, an entrepreneur uh, uh, society or ecosystem, you need to have a role model. You need to have a role model, somebody that they can understand the youth and the youth can communicate with. Because the youth like to be heard. They like to feel that they are important and they're um, a message they can come across. Otherwise, they won't come to you, they won't trust you, they won't open up, and that's crucial. You know, um, how many of us that their life changed forever because of a mentor and a teacher and uh, a leader who not only believed in you, but also showed you that your ideas not only matter, but it can be real and how that changed your life. We, they need to have that. And, uh, and, and I mentioned earlier, and as we also provide inspiration, we need to be inspired. We need to inspire also the whole community. To, to create an ecosystem, we need to have the businessmen inspired. I need to ask the businessmen to invest in science. I'm not saying them that to throw the money away. I'm saying them invest in science, and you can have some retain, but it's going to be not like a huge return, but this is your responsibility. This enterprise has to come also from you. And it to also encourage all the government in terms of like um, pushing forward to that, uh, 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 make it uh, like uh, appealing. And also the education system, uh, uh, families, parents, uh, schools, uh, inventors. So that this is the whole ecosystem of all of us. We are living in a material world and we are running after making money, money. But we forgot a very important ingredient that we're a human.